today. So I'm talking to you about uh, the cost of inputs applicable to livestock farmers in South Africa. So I'm sure most of you will agree that the uh, past few months, you, we've seen significant increases in a number of different inputs in these different uh, livestock enterprises. Uh, for example, the, the increase in the price of fuel, if you look at, for example, the price of leak, interest rates have been, uh, have been uh, increasing. And then, of course, we still see expensive grain uh, prices, and that is uh, especially applicable or affecting the guys in the intensive livestock in industries, the pigs and uh, poultry. All right, so some of the reasons for this, that we've seen these uh, changes in prices, well, for sure, the, the first one to mention is then the invasion of Ukraine, where, we, where that has led to an increase in the rent crude oil prices. And the ripple effect is then more expensive diesel and petrol prices. Um, and also increase in other energy prices. Then the other thing is foot and mouth disease, where we've seen this uh, disease or outbreak of this disease in a number of different provinces. It is still not... Uh, totally under control, and that has caused a major upset in the, the usual uh, workings of the red meat uh, marketing channels. All right. So if we look at some of the statistics in the abstract of agricultural statistics as issued by Department of Agriculture, I went and I compared the prices between 2001 and 2021, the latest ones that I could find where we see that the, the price of all intermediate, intermediary goods and services, so basically the a combination of inputs applicable at to, 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 to producers at farm level, has increased by almost 360% over these 20 years. If you go and look at the respective uh, livestock industries, it's only uh, beef cattle, sheep, and, and specifically the, the mutton or lamb part of it, and then wool. Um, we, we has seen greater increases in their respective prices as compared to this increase in the, the price of all goods and services on average. All right. So probably the biggest contributing factor to this increase in, 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 in inputs was then the price of animal feed, where we see that that price has increased by almost 440% over these 20 years. So I know that's, that's maybe a bit too old dated for you guys watching. I went and I, I digged into more recent prices that I could find. So if you look at a production leak, uh, where we have seen November this year compared to November last year, 10% increase to the price I was quoted. And if we look at uh, winter leak, so uh, that's higher in, contains usually a bit more urea, uh, that price increase was 52% year on year. Okay, so inputs are a bit more expensive. We look if we look at the output side of it, class A beef carcasses saw an increase of 17% the past year. If we look at winner calf prices, on average for the year so far, it decreased by 2%. Okay. And that's applicable to I, I believe most cattle farmers, beef cattle farmers in South Africa, where they just sell off their winners. If we look at the last five weeks or so, we saw that the last the prices for the last five weeks compared to a similar period last year decreased by 10%. So if you look at traditional um, trends, the, this is actually, this should be a better time of the year to market your winners, where usually the prices increase from October, November up to December, where we actually see a downward trend. And this trend that we've been seeing throughout the whole year so far. So it's not very, um, so it's it's a bit of a dull picture at this stage, but we hope it will improve. If we look at year-on-year -year increases in 2020 and 2021, we saw a 17% increase per year for the uh, both years in the winner calf price, whereas we, we, we mentioned now a 2% decrease in the current year we are in. So actually, things were looking a bit better, in my opinion. Or we can understand that livestock farmers, cattle farmers, more specifically, got a bit more positive about the industry the, the, the two previous years and a bit more negative in the current year. Now, if we look at some of the forecasts, 
the Reserve Bank predicts inflation forecast of 33.3% uh, for fuel this year, and they suspect it will decrease, the fuel price will decrease by around 0.8% in the next year. If you look at the price of electricity for the current year, the inflation for electricity prices is predicted at 10.7% for next year, 9%, and the year after that, 10%. So that's not an ideal situation. If we look at the prediction for, for headline inflation for the current year, it's predicted at 6.7% for the next year, 5.4%. And the two years after that, they predict an inflation rate of 4.5%. So if we take into consideration that actually the Reserve Bank is pursuing a, an inflation rate of 4.5%, so it's in the middle of that uh, inflation band that they are pursuing, we can expect that interest rates could likely increase in the next year. But in my opinion, we'll definitely not start to decrease very soon. Now, the theory behind increasing uh, interest rates is then, to, of course, first of all, to, to, to control inflation rate. The effect of this higher in, um, interest rate is the, sorry, in the short term, it takes money out of, of consumers' pockets, so they are poorer. In long term, in the long term, they will, however, be uh, a bit richer, theoretically as their um, salaries and whatever remuneration they earn uh, increases according to the inflation rate. All right, so in the short term, I don't think it we will see much uh, significant increases in carcass prices, um, spe especially applicable to lamb and beef carcasses. If we look at what the World Bank is saying, Brent crude oil this year in dollar terms is 42% more expensive than the than last year. That also then caused this inflation seen in the fuel prices. Good news, they expect that this crude oil price will decrease by around 8% next year. If we took look into the urea price, uh, remember urea then is applicable to, to almost all livestock farmers providing lick of some sorts. That price was 76% higher in April this year as in 2021. In October, this price decreased a bit to roughly about a, a level where it was 50% more expensive than the previous year. Um, this price, a bit of good news, is expected to decrease by around 10% in 2023 and another 8% in 2024. So hopefully that effect of a decreased price in urea will eventually uh, will work its way through the value chain towards uh, producers. If we look then uh, in short, what uh, what have we been see what have we seen the past year? We've seen a, a, a increase in the price of inputs for the various reasons mentioned. While as on the output side, especially if you are selling uh, winner calves, your prices have been under pressure. All right, so there's a bit more pressure to be profitable. So then the question is, what can you do? Now, it's not a, there's no silver bullet answer, unfortunately, but producers will have to remember that pr these price cycles are, they move in, in, in cycles. And at this stage, we are in a bit of a tough situation. Um, so I think uh, as a side note, producers should always save a bit of money in the good times for a bad time. As now, the problem is you should have built up those savings already so producers will have to tighten their belts they will have to look at all of their expenses debit orders insurance policies um, and reevaluate them maybe ask for a bit of discount or a, a second opinion from a, a, an alternative company in terms of inputs that they purchase um, ask around the, the uh, shop around ask around in, in in your local town from the different suppliers uh, compare prices, uh, negotiate for a bit of discount because I believe most of them will be eager for business. Then, of course, it always helps if you try and if you buy in bulk and you buy uh, ahead of price increases to take advantage of that. Although it might not be a lot, every bit should help. Then, um, just getting back to the, the the comment made about interest rates, if you want to um, take on additional debt. Uh, do it um, carefully, make sure you'll be able to absorb and handle a higher interest rate and still be able to stay on your farm. 
then producers should should aim to produce for maximum profit, not necessarily maximum yield. All right. So don't try and brag with the heaviest wiener calf. Rather try and ensure that every every rand you spent on producing that wiener calf on a per kilogram basis is worth it or maybe lower than your neighbor. All right. So how can you do that? First of all, you have to get out all of your unproductive animals out of your herd or your flock. And then you should um, reduce inputs as far as possible without jeopardizing your production. So if you know you, you're going to reduce production leak at the cost of producing, reducing your uh, conception rate or weaning percentage, that does not make sense. All right. So don't... Uh, I think the correct word is penny wise, pound foolish. Then the last thing that's very important, especially to livestock producers, is they when they are marketing their animals to do it through a trustworthy agent or company or person. What do I mean here? This person or company should be registered with APAC. That will then help you or ensure that you get paid for that product that is loaded um, or sold.